Hi, this is Elizabeth with Felted Sky Studio, here with the instructions for our Ocean View Needle Felting Kit. So before we get started, there's just a couple of things that I want to talk with you about. First is, you will want to have a foam mat on hand before you get started. So this is the one that we carry. You just want to make sure you have a work surface that is large enough and a dense enough foam so that your needle is not going to poke down onto whatever surface you're working on. And you might also want to get a sharp scissors ready because at the end of the project we're going to need to cut off some excess wool. And then if you want to frame your project when it's finished, you should have your frame ideally before you start. So this is the frame that we carry, and if you don't have that, um, you can use any frame really that has a place for the picture to fit. So let's go ahead and open up the kit and see what's inside. So just go ahead and pull everything out. And so this is our pre-felt. This is technically a preliminary felt. It's wool that is not all the way felted. This is the one that I make um, for these kits myself, and it's a nice local farm wool. So that's going to be our canvas that we'll be working on. Then in here we have the different types of wool. So this one is called a batting or a felting bat and it comes off a carding machine in these thin, more rectangular pieces. So we have that and we have a little bit of white, also a bat or a batting. And then we also have what is called roving. And there are different words for this. Um, I call this one roving because that's what the company calls it that makes it, but it comes in a thinner rope and has more of a twist to it. So that is our roving. And then I just want to say a couple things about needle safety. Let's see if I can get this in the frame here. So this is our needle. This one is a 38 triangle that we're using for this project. And it's in this foam board just to keep it safe, make sure it doesn't get bent or lost or accidentally poke anyone. So you can store it back in here when you're finished. It's a good idea. Or sometimes I will also um, leave it in my foam mat. So you just don't want to leave it laying around where it could get lost or poke anyone, or if you have, especially if you have pets or kids around. So either store it in your mat or back in the foam board. And that's the needle we'll be using. And then I also just wanted to say on the instruction sheet, you have your list of colors here if you want to follow along and make sure you're getting the right colors. And then when you open it up, next to every uh, step on here, there's an ex some extra numbers. That is the time stamp. Uh, for the video. So if you just want to watch certain parts with the video or if you want to watch something over again, that's the time that you can just move to on the video and know right where you are. So one last thing about the frame before we start. Uh, whatever frame you're going to use, it's a good idea before you start to take your canvas your pre-felt backing that you're using and see if it is a fit before you get started and this one needs to be trimmed probably just a little bit before we start because it doesn't quite fit down in there perfectly on this side. So I will do that before we start and that's just good to make sure you're going to fit into the frame. Alright, so that is all I needed to talk about, and I think we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is take this color of batting uh, for the sky, and take a look at your backing and your piece, and we only need the sky to come down about two inches, so if your piece is bigger than that, what we're going to do is just tear off a little bit from one side so that we have a thinner piece of sky and then lay it out 
on your backing. And don't worry about the edges at all because in the end we're just going to trim those with the scissors. So it's fine if it goes over the edges. We want it to go all the way to the edges so that will be fine. So all we're going to do is take our needle and just poke. So you'll notice that you hear my needle going into the mat. So that is a good thing to notice to make sure you're poking hard enough. You want to be going all the way through your piece of backing and down into the mat. And if you poke too lightly like this, you won't be attaching the wool fibers quite as much as they need to be. So we want, you know, you don't have to be like rigorously stabbing, but you want to make sure you're poking with enough effort that it's going down into the mat. So all we're going to do is poke. So we're just going to keep poking. I kind of go from one side to another, but it, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to poke this whole area until this piece of wool is firmly attached onto the backing and it's going to look pretty smooth and all flattened out. So while I do that, I will probably speed up the video just to shorten that up and then we'll do the next step. So here we go. One thing I forgot to mention, which I will go ahead and say, is that you do want to make sure your other hand is out of the way of the needle. So you'll see when I'm poking that my other hand might be holding the wool a little bit, but it's, it's well over here because if you get it too close to the needle, very easy to accidentally poke yourself. And if you poke yourself with this needle, you will bleed and it hurts. So try not to do that. All right, so keep your other hand well away and just be very conscious of where your other fingers are while you're poking so as not to poke yourself. All right, here we go again. Okay, so that's pretty good. It's all flattened out and it's all right if you see the little holes from the needle. We'll see less of those once we pull it off, up off the mat. And also take a minute to hold it up and look at it. And if you see any parts where the backing is showing through and it wasn't quite thick enough to cover up all of the backing, you can take the extra piece that we had left over and just pull little pieces off. So just a small little wispy piece. And if you have any spots that need a little bit of fixing that weren't quite uh, covered up, you can always add a little bit if you need to. So I'll go ahead and just poke those down. Okay, so now we're ready to put in some clouds on our sky. Let me show you from the original that we're working from. So we're just going to put in a few little wispy clouds. So find your piece of white batting. And then what we're going to do is just tear off just small little wispy pieces. And then if you want them to be a little thinner, you can pull them apart just a bit. And if you've gotten them too big, you just, just pull off the extra. So then arrange these wherever you would like them on your sky. So I might put in three or 
four. So some can be bigger, some can be smaller, something like that. So then when we're poking these down, I'm not going to poke quite as much as I did with the sky. We're going to leave them looking a little bit wispy and not as flattened out. So just not quite as much poking on each one. And if you poke more around the edges, you can leave the middles kind of puffed up just a little bit. So the more you poke, the flatter it will be, and the less you poke, the more kind of wispy and not quite as flattened out it will be. So this is hard to see, but I'm leaving them just a little bit uh, 3D, not quite as flattened out. Alright, there are some clouds, and again, if you want to change them, or if you put in one that you didn't like, all you have to do, if you want to take one off, is pull it pull it off. So this, this art form is very forgiving. If you do something you don't like, just pull it off and then you can change it, get a new piece of wool, put it back in slightly differently. So this other cloud, like I might make this, maybe I want it a little bit bigger add a little bit to it. And you can shape them a little bit by taking the needle and pulling the wool fibers up or down. So as you're poking, you can take the needle and kind of arrange the fibers even to do some shaping. So there are our clouds, and we are ready to start on our ocean water. So we're going to find this color called Time, and this is roving, so uh, it can have a twist to it. And we want to do what's called drafting, just very gently flatten it out just a little bit, straighten it out so that it's not got that twist when we put it down here. And sometimes there are also extra little fibers in here called guard hairs that are just, it's hard to see on the video, but they're just white, white extra fibers, or you might see a dark black fiber, so anything that looks junky that you don't want in there, uh, just pull it out. And then we're just going to flatten this out on here. We're going to overlap the sky just a little bit. So we're going to have something like this. And then I like to start at one end and kind of anchor this down and then make sure I'm kind of pulling it flat with my other hand so that it's nice and straight. So that is our first piece of the ocean. Then we're going to grab this other color called mint julep, which is a little more green. And again, we can flatten it out, make sure there aren't any extra little junky fibers in there that we don't want. So this is going to overlap that piece of time. And then when you lay it out, we're going to pull off the extra here and then we're going to lay out one more piece of this. So flattening, just a tiny bit of drafting, and then overlap. So this is our ocean water. So that's what we have, and then I'm going to also go ahead and put in this piece of sand at the bottom. Well, this color is actually called dune, but this is going to be the sand next to our water. Oh, and before we do that, let's pull off a little tiny piece. We're going to use that later, so set that aside. Alright, so now we can poke all of this down. I'm going to start kind of at the top and at the side and work over. Um, but you can work the other way. Uh, this is just kind of the way that I do it. So, again, I will speed up the video. 
just to save some time there, and uh, then we'll look at the next part. Here we go. Okay, so now we're finished with poking all of that down. Took a little while, but should all be pretty nice and smooth. So the next thing we're going to do is put some highlights in our ocean water. So that's with this color called Blue Raspberry. So we won't need all of this. We're just going to take some little tiny wispy pieces so hopefully you can see that. We're just going to take some of these little wisps and put them on our ocean water. And we want them to be spread out and this is just again a tiny, tiny bit kind of giving some bluer highlights to that water that was more green. So we have something like this and now we're going to poke that down. Okay, so now we have some bluer highlights in our water, and I might go ahead and put in just a little bit more. Again, this is kind of your personal preference, how you want it to look. So if you want it a little more blue, you can add a little more of this. If you like it the way it is, then just don't add, don't add very much. Okay, now we're ready to put some waves in, or more the, the white here of waves breaking. So we're going to take our white batting again, and we want to take some smaller pieces and pull them to kind of thin them out so we have something like this. And then pick where you want to have some waves breaking here in your ocean water. So they should be going straight across and a little bit fuller in the center and thin at the ends. So we're going to take the needle and poke these, but again to have them with a bit more of a 3D effect. 
and kind of like they're popping up off of the, the wool painting just a little bit. We're going to poke more at an angle, so we're going to poke all around the sides, but take your needle and it's going to be going in at more of an angle just to catch the edges, but leave the middle popped up just a little bit. It's hard to see on the video, but hopefully you get that idea. So again, angle this side and angle the other way so that we want to push the wool kind of towards the center and that will keep it a little more puffed up in the middle. one and then this one kind of continues on over here. So we want these to kind of just be random and organic looking. So we could put another one in. And again it's not very much wool at all. It's just little tiny pieces. This one could be a little less pronounced. That one's a little more just flattened out in the distance. And then put in a couple more here. We want them to kind of be staggered. So I'm going to do one more over here. And part of this one will be covered up once we do our next, next parts, but we'll still see some of it. So again, I'm kind of angling the needle and just catching the top and bottom edge, but I'm not poking the middle as much so that it, it's not all the way flattened out. If you do poke the middle, poke it a little more gently just to get the fibers attached but not really flattened. And then we'll do one more at the water's edge here by our sand. And this one could be a little bit wider perhaps. take away. You can always do that. Kind of tinker until you get it how you want. So I think that looks pretty good. And the next thing we're going to do is find our piece of fawn batting. That's what this color is called. And we're going to get a small piece just to put right here in the middle and then we're going to have some sand dunes coming up. So we'll pull off just a small piece to put right here at the bottom. And again if it goes off your backing that's fine because we're going to be cutting it off. So get a piece something like that and we'll poke this one down and then we'll add our sand dunes coming up. Okay, have that attached, so then we're going to get that piece again and just kind of lay out where we want our little hills, our dunes to go. So again on our original piece we're putting in these first and then we're going to cover them with our grassy parts. So sometimes it's nice to lay out where you want it to be and then hold and pull off your extra while you're holding here. Oops, I shook the table. 
So then on the other side, we're going to have another one coming down something like this, and it's overlapping the water some. So get that in place and then hold and pull off extra wool. Again, don't worry about the edges too much. We're going to trim those at the end. So then we have this, and then I'm going to go ahead and poke these down. When you're doing the edges, again, angle the needle. Hopefully you can see. Angle the needle a little bit to just catch that edge. And do the, I usually do the edges first, and then go back and poke down the rest, so that ensures you have a nice edge that you have shaped, kind of put where you want it to be. So that's what we'll do first, and then poke the rest, and then we'll be ready to add in some of our little grassy spots. And again, if you want to alter your shaping, just kind of move the wool around on here until you get it going where you want it to be. Okay, so here we go. So now that those are in, we're going to find our dark green color called moss. And we're just going to put in some darker green areas. Oops. So this is the darker green underneath our grasses. So we're just going to pull, and again, very wispy. And we want the um, the sand to show through. So you're just going to lay this on very light and wispy and you can pull apart so that there is sand showing through. And I'm just going to lay this in again kind of kind of randomly but some darker green spots here. So something like that, and then we'll poke this down. we have there, and I think I might want to add just a bit more to this side. So again, you can always go back, add more, take some off, and then also we're going to put in just a little bit of this piece of dune, this one was called, um, that we did for this little strip. I'm going to add just, just a little bit of that in here as well. extra dimension here in our little sandy spots. So I'll finish poking this in.
Okay, so the last part of this wool painting is going to be done with this color called Sage. And again, if you see anything in here that I want to take out, I'm just going to pull that out. So what we're going to do with these is pull some pieces off from the end. So here I have a piece like this. And these are just because of the, um, the staple length, it's called the length of the wool fibers. This is a little bit long for what we need, so I'm going to take a scissors and just cut the ends off, maybe an inch or so from both ends. And just set that aside. So then we'll have a piece something like this. And what we're going to do is just roll this between your hands. And it's fairly warm where I am right now. My hands are a little bit moist, so this is working. But if you have very dry hands, you'll want to get like a rag or a little sponge wet and get some moisture on your hands and then roll. This does better with just a little bit of moisture. So we're going to make a roll that you see when we roll it, the, uh, the ends get um, a little more pointy and defined. And then we're going to fold it in half and this is going to be our grasses. So then we're going to just start to arrange these on our dune areas. So once you have one in place, what we're going to do is poke just at the bottom first and get it, get it attached. And then again, we're not going to poke these a whole lot because we want them to stay looking wispy and a little bit popped off like they're at the background, like they're a little bit 3D. So poke more at the edges and the bottom, but not as much in the middle. So we're leaving them not very, not very felted, but just enough that they're going to stay on. And this one was still perhaps a little bit longer, so we want to vary their their lengths, but we want them maybe even a little shorter than that. So this next one I'm going to do, I'm going to cut off the ends again and maybe even make it a little shorter. So again, in between the hands here, Let's see if we can get the camera to focus back up. There we go. So this one is a little bit shorter. I'm liking this length. So again, we can fold it. You can either fold it entirely in half, kind of on, on top of itself, so that we have like one bigger piece, or you can let those two ends kind of show next to each other. So we just want them to all have a little bit of difference. We don't want them all to be the same so that they look nice and organic looking like they'd be growing in nature. And again, I'm going to poke this mostly at the bottom and at the edges, but we're not, we're not making it all the way flat. Alright, so I'm just going to continue putting these in. Let me show you our original again. So we're just going to be lining this whole side kind of like this, line this side, and they're going to kind of be overlapping each other. So I'm going to go ahead and do this with, um, with the video sped up, uh, but you should still be able to see as I put these in, we're just going to overlap and make them all slightly different just so they're organic looking. And this is our final part of this picture. So here we go. Um, I'm just going to work to put the rest of these in. This is a bit more of a time consuming section.
Okay, so once you're satisfied with how all of your grass is looking, then this painting is finished. So what we're going to do is pull it up off of the mat, and sometimes it takes a little tug, but we gently want to pull it up off the mat, and you can see on the back where all of the, the wool has come through, that's what's holding it on. And once you pull it up, sometimes it's good to take another look at it and make sure everything is staying attached and is nice and well felted so that it's all going to stay on and hold. So if you see any areas that seem like they need a little more attention, we can do that now. Actually, let's go ahead and cut off our edges. So we're going to take a sharp scissors and just cut off the extra that was hanging over the edges. And then we can really see how it's looking. So then, take another look and see if there are any, any parts that need just a little more poking once we pulled it up off the mat. Okay, I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, so the very last step is to put it into a frame. So I'll get our frame here. And if you have our frame, it should just fit right in once it's trimmed. If it doesn't quite fit, you can tinker with it a little and just keep trimming little by little around the edges till it fits just right. And then we'll on our backer board. It's very snugly. And there we have it. So I hope you really enjoyed making this project. I hope you like the way that yours turned out. And if you would like to purchase a kit or purchase supplies to make your own or uh, ask any questions, just come visit us at feltedsky.com. And as always, happy felting!